Nazanin is currently still in Evin prison, which is the high security prison in Tehran. Um, she's been sentenced for five years on um, secret charges. They never reveal what they are. Um, currently, we're awaiting appeal. The appeal process, so we've filed for an appeal, which is where you take the papers in. They haven't read the appeal papers yet, so they were supposed to do it within a month, and, and it's now 40 days. So there's a stalling going on there. Um, yesterday, my father-in-law took my daughter, who's two, to the judge to try and say, listen, this is, there's, a, there's a little baby involved here. Can you not just, just you know, get on with it? And they weren't allowed through the door. Um, so there's a, a frustration and a waiting there. In terms of Nazanin's situation, she's currently kept in the very high security wing of Evin Prison, um, which is, I don't think she's in solitary confinement, but she's been with one other person, entirely controlled whenever she's allowed to speak to anyone or see anything. Um, and, and she's gone through different phases. So before she would have been quite angry. Um, at the moment, she's very, very flat, very low. Um, you know, and it sort of manifests itself in terms of sort of palpitations and, and pains and, and, you know, her hands not working properly, her eyesight's going and, 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 and all sorts of things that are just a consequence of, of, I mean, the physical conditions but also the stress. And, and um, I, think, I think she was saying on the phone yesterday she's, you know, wonders if she'll ever get out. Um, so she's got to a very low place. It's clearly a very political case. So they, they have taken her and they've made it clear that they're holding her uh, as a bargaining chip for... Um, for a negotiation. They haven't clarified uh, to us what that would be or, or what they want. But they've told her, listen, if, you know, if the British government makes an agreement, then we'll release her. It's as brazen as that. Um, so it is up in the air and it could last um, however long. And, I mean, I, part of the point of being here and part of the point of asking Amnesty to be involved was, was you know, that moral clarity but also that sort of you know, imperative effort to just you know, keep pushing for the government to do you know, what it can to, to get this solved so that I mean, hopefully they'll be home for Christmas. We're at a time where uh, the UK has uh, opened its embassy in Iran. Uh, there are new political openings being made. We have a new foreign secretary. Uh, and it seems to us at Amnesty International that on both of these uh, cases of uh, dual nat nationals, that our foreign secretary should have these people and these families at the top of his thoughts when he is talking to his Iranian counterparts. We're here um, opposite Downing Street. Um, protesting and reminding everyone about my uh, dad. He's 77 years old. Uh, today is his 2000th day in Evin prison, which is an extraordinary length of time, with no evidence or explanation ever provided by Iran. He's been due for early release under their normal rules for over two and a half years, and there's no explanation about what's going on. Um, he is ill, he's got cataracts and needs urgent operations on each eye, and unfortunately he's been waiting two months now with no sign of those. They're very routine operations and it's just not clear what's going on. Um, just in the last few months, virtually every week, my dad's been told you're going to be released next week. Um, I've long learned, and I think the rest of the family's long learned, that don't believe anything until it actually happens. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a really very, very difficult waiting game for us, and a very dangerous waiting game as well. When you're that age and that ill, you know, thing, you know uh, health can deteriorate very rapidly. And I think, uh, you know, it would really be a good sign of Islamic compassion and mercy for them just to release him. And the flip side is, if they don't, that he, he could really... Uh, uh, South could really go downhill very quickly in Evin Prison and he has no family there, he's had no visitors for over five years and that would be a real shame.